management is the best way to get the least out of your team members are you a micromanager have you ever been in a micromanagement situation how do you even know that you are being micromanaged or you are a micromanager in today's video I will be using my real life experience to go through some of the signs that you are a micromanager or you are being micromanaged. We will also be discussing the consequences that comes with being micromanaged or you being a micromanager. So please stay tuned. Hello everyone, this is Karen from Malfong, your Agile Evangelist and welcome back to our channel on this channel we consistently come up with different concepts around seven leadership agile business agility agile in real life that will help us continuously learn and improve and just thrive in our personal life as well as thrive in our corporate lives if this is your first time on this channel please stay tuned and also remember to click the subscription button and the notification bell so you will not miss out on our weekly upload remember to share with your friends and loved ones so that we are all learning and thriving together and no one is judging us now let's go straight into the topic how do you know that you are being micromanaged or you are a micromanager now like i said i'm going to be using my real experience to discuss this topic throughout my career i've worked with different managers that i was able to gain with my agile structured brain i was able to determine that they are being i'm being micromanaged or my teams are being micromanaged so what are some of these signs the very first sign that i noticed was that the manager had that tendency of always delegating or assigning tasks to team member true leaders will focus on partnering with team members to identify the goal and then communicate the goal ensure that the goal is clear then step back and then let the team members determine what are the tasks that we need to do in order to accomplish this goal but it wasn't the case in my experience for this particular manager the manager will come and take the goal instead of partnering with team members to identify the goal that's fine and then the manager will also go further to assign task to team members you see we don't want that kind of situation that's the first sign managers always want to assign work to team members the second thing that i noticed was that the managers even after assigning the work to team members they also want to date to team members how to do the work so they dictate the what they also dictate the how that is team members may have different approaches in achieving the same result managers want it to be done exactly their way so it's easier either their way or the highway we don't want that kind of situation doing it like that it actually impedes team members from being creative and um, being empowered to achieve the result the third thing that i noticed was that the manager always wants to be updated on every single little nitty greedy information about the project or the products that the team members were working on. I'm not talking about periodic updates. I'm talking about hourly updates on everything that was going on, on their daily activities. I. Next thing that I noticed again was that the manager want to attend, want to be a part of all of the team members meetings, their team, all of the activities they were doing, not just because the manager want to be a part of the team, but the manager want to, you want to be in control of all of their meetings. And how did I know that the manager wanted to be in control? Let's say their daily scrum. Remember daily scrum is that meeting where it's really for the developers by the developers where developers come and then they determine they, they inspect and adapt the progress they work so that they're ensuring that they're on track in achieving their goal but what what i noticed was that the manager will connect for all of their meetings including daily scrum 
and the manager will interrupt every single time a team member is saying something and the manager will tell them exactly i want you to do this by this time so the manager found it really difficult to not be in control the manager always wanted that urge to feel like they are in control of everything that was going on with the team another thing that i noticed was that the managers really found it uh, or they find it really difficult to take suggestions or feedback every time a team member wanted to give feedback or suggest anything that is different from whatever they had already dictated the manager always jump in and shut the person up immediately or push back or argue the way out of it argue the way out of that suggestion or out of that idea that's to me i see that as micromanagement another sign that i noticed was that the managers found really hard to trust their team members that is they don't trust the team members judgment they don't trust team members opinion they tell team members exactly how what to do at every point in time you see and then i begin to ask this question if you don't trust your team member why are they on your team why should you be hiring people you don't trust if you're hiring anyone you should be able to trust their skills you should be able to trust their competency their judgment and their ability to innovate if you are not able to trust these things and then there is no point hiring this person so these were some of the signs that i i, I was able to determine that these are micromanagers now we're going to move forward to discussing consequences of this my of this management style of this leadership style well but before i do so i just want to quickly say this you have in being agile our goal is to continuously impact our community through through helping them transition into the corporate space especially the agile career corporate space so if you're looking to successfully transition into the agile career space if you're just a starter it doesn't matter if you have already started you've taken some fundamental trainings you have the certifications you're in the job market you're struggling you don't know how to go about it you've been getting interviews yet you cannot bypass these interviews and land a job you're struggling with your resume you're struggling with your linkedin you don't know how to go about it or you are already working right as a scrum master or any other role and you're struggling at your role and you want to really add more value you really know that you can do more you can be more but you don't know how to be more can help you achieve that goal anything around agile can help you achieve that goal if you're already working and you're doing well but yet you want to upskill towards your career progression you want to move from being a scrum master or a product manager or being a relationship engineer to agile coaching we have a fantastic agile coaching mentoring program that we can help you become a successful agile coach that is way better than me that is the goal we want you to be better than us and if you are looking to be in a scrum master we can help you become a scrum master through our through our customized tr uh, certification trainings mentorship boot camp set up program so please reach out to us that's our contact information right there and we'll be more than happy to get you started we have classes coming up in this month next month and we can definitely slide you in look forward to working with you now let's continue what are some of the consequences of being micromanaged or you working with a micromanager number one team members are not empowered they will not be empowered to be creative to do anything they'll just sit there and wait for you to tell them what to do and if you don't tell them what to do they will just be doing busy work with their time so that they don't come across like not doing anything and then they are being judged you see so that alone means that your team will not be creative there will be no innovation within your team and that is dangerous and then another thing too is the team members will not use the time efficiently because they are afraid of being judged and even say something because they know you will not even listen to them they will just be busy around busy work i call it busy work meanwhile they are not doing anything productive you see and they will be wasting time for no reason now what are some of the consequences of micromanagement 
for the things that have helped these are some of the things that i i gathered the first one is that your team will not be accountable because it's not theirs they are not empowered to be accountable and you cannot expect accountability out of a team that lack empowerment all the decisions are in your hands all of the what to do how to do they are all in your hands as a manager and then how do you expect accountability out of people that are not accountable on how things should be done i recently read a book from esther derby and the title of the book is seven rules of positive productive change she stated in that book that if you want anybody to be accountable on anything their fingerprint has to be on the decision if their fingerprint is not on the decision then do not expect any accountability from them so that's the first thing the second thing is that you have team members that are always stressed they don't enjoy work every time they wake up from their bed they think about work it seems like it's punishment to them they feel stressed they feel burnt out they feel tired all the time and that doesn't help you achieve the goal that doesn't help you achieve a healthy environment or a healthy team the third thing that i observed with these different teams throughout my experience is that you will find a team with very very low morale they don't feel like putting in their best because at the end of the day they don't even understand how their own contribution adds to the big picture because they are not a part of the decision if you are a part of the decision you automatically own it and then you want to put in your all to ensure that you're achieving quality so team members teams that have been micromanaged they end up being in a situation where they don't see any need to put in their all they don't care about quality they do the bare minimum because at the end of the day it's not theirs they are only responsible to the task but they are not accountable if any leadership has to come to ask questions it's not them they'll be asking you the micromanager so you see at the end of the day it comes back to you the other thing that i've noticed again is that you will you will find a team with no creativity limited or no creativity because your manager cannot find it very difficult to accept suggestions so when you do that team members will shy away and they will keep their thoughts to themselves they'll keep their opinions to themselves and you know that creativity only comes when team members are able to express one of the scrum values called openness when they are open and they are courageous enough to speak up and share ideas and they are not afraid to fail because they are not afraid of being judged you will see that you will your team will be innovative but if you are a micromanager based on all the signs that I've, I've highlighted don't expect that from your team and then the other thing that i've noticed again is that micromanagement also hinders problem solving team members may identify a problem but because they are in an environment where they are not empowered to pick things and run with it they will just stay and wait after two days or maybe you micromanager you are on vacation they'll just stay there and wait for you to come back whenever you're coming back before you telling them what to do before they move forward so it hinders problem solving abilities and as a result of that it impacts your goal as an organization you see so how efficient is that or how effective is that so there is really no point with all the micromanagement and the other thing that i noticed the other thing that i noticed is that team members will not communicate and collaborate as they should what's the point when collaborating or communicating will still not be appreciated so they end up being a group of people working separately instead of a true team communication will be hindered the communication strings will be broken because they will still wait for you to come and tell them what to do communicating will still not solve anything because at the end of the day it will be brushed and you will come to tell them what to do now these are some of the things that in my experience i have observed with identifying the, the the threats of micromanagement and the consequences that comes with it now this is going to be part one of the video i'm going to do a second video because i don't want this to be too long i'm going to do a second video and in that second video i will be covering what to do some things you should do if you feel you are being micromanaged or you're, you're in a, a micromanagement environment and
And I'm going to be sharing some things that I did to deal with a micromanagement situation when I realized that I was in a micromanagement situation that helped turn things around. I'm also going to be sharing some things that you should do to help yourself if you realize that you are the micromanager. This is going to be it for today. I hope this video was helpful. Please make sure you share this video with your managers, especially if you are in a micromanagement environment, use this video to educate your, your, your environment so that you're helping your team move one step further. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!